Hello everyone, welcome back to another painting. Today I'm just doing a demo and this is a beautiful field of uh, rapeseed uh, just in the, the evening kind of light as it was getting um, really warm. It was quite hazy so we've got this beautiful glow. So what I'm going to do is just block down darks first. I love this colour by the way, if anyone wants to know this is a blue earth pastel. Um, off the top of my head, can't remember the number, but there's only a few that are this dark and this blue. Um, one is a navy blue, which is a kind of greeny blue, uh, which is what I've used for this one, and the other one is a purple blue. Um, I love both, I have both in my collection, I want more, I just can't afford more, but I want more. Um, so then we're just going to block in the sky. I generally always tend to block in the sky directly after blocking in my darks only because I just like to get that difference in contrast because it helps me ground. Now this is just water, I'm just using water to do this. Sometimes I use alcohol if I want it to dry quicker but realistically um, if you have the time and patience it's just worth doing it with water because it's, it's yes it's messier um, but it is easier to clean up also. Also you don't have to deal with the fumes of having to use alcohol which realistically if you're working in a small workshop and studio space like I do you really don't want to be uh, handling like isopropanol on things like this without adequate ventilation it's quite dangerous so um, no need to get high while you are doing your artwork otherwise things get a little bit interesting so we're just going to smush all this down um, I'm trying to keep even strokes from left to right just because you can see there's a few different layers in this reference photo um, but they're all in bands so it makes really interesting composition that you kind of almost have stripes going from top to bottom so that's what I'm kind of trying to work into and actually when you do that from the start with your underpainting you work in that naturally as you go through so you want to kind of keep that flow of the direction of your painting um, in order to kind of indicate the direction that, that you see in the reference photo and I really just want to make sure that I capture all these different layers because um, they're really quite pretty. You see there's kind of lots of kind of um, warm greens and I've put a really cool underpainting down. That's deliberate. In order to really offset this and get the contrast I really wanted the cool on the underside. It is a very warm painting. Lots of yellows, lots of oranges, and underneath all that, you can just about see it here and here, kind of where along these lines are, um, is this this purple that you can see coming through. And it's kind of like a a neutral violet tone. So I'm going to put some heavy purple down first because I really want I really want the colour to pop. Um, I don't want to lose it. I know it's a bit more neutral than the reference photo, but no, I want to just be able to actually keep that going and just make that pop a little bit more just to give it a bit of contrast against the yellow and the orange skies. I'm probably also going to bring out the skies a little bit more. I think at the end of the day when I finished this paint, I just wasn't happy with the sky, but you don't have to be happy with everything. It still worked out really well. Um, I quite like the fact that I did still manage to be able to get the layering which is what I wanted and you can see here, clearly see the bands, I've split it with the lighter purple in order to make that a little bit more obvious. The purple's actually where there's a gap, um, this field had a couple of different kind of levels to it where it kind of, well I would say levels but maybe rolls might be a better, better way of saying it, um, where there was a dip and then it comes back up and where that dip is you, that's where the kind of purpley colour comes from is that there's like a, a lower level of the plant and then it comes back up again as it comes back up you see more of the base of the plant which is where that purple layer is so I've just put that down and I've kind of just rubbed that in just so that it gives a softer look to the underside and now I am working on the sky this is a lovely colour by the way I really like this one I know that obviously it's going to be more orangey um, along the baseline just above the start of the edge of the, the visual edge of the field anyway 
but it, I always like to use this to kind of just layer it down first. It is such a beautiful kind of creamy mellow yellow. So it, it's got a lot, you know, quite a few orangey tints in it and that actually helps kind of mellow it out. I'm not a fan of vibrant yellows. I'm a fan of vibrant yellow greens, but not a fan of vibrant yellows. And I really could do with more oranges in my life and more greens and probably some more purple. Just everything. Just, I'll take everything. So this is just working on that base there. Weirdly enough, that orange band is actually still part of the plants in the field. It's just the field kind of tips back up right at the end of the field in the distance. And because of that and the haze, um, you don't really see it. You just see it as a band of the kind of sunsetty colours um, with the sun setting, but actually it is still part of the field. I think you just have to note kind of that that is there because it does fade off to the right hand corner into the green which you can just about see that I've added green there just the, the corner um, so it's not actually sky um, and the next band actually is distant trees but it was so hazy that you couldn't really see that they were trees it was just this bank of this beautiful yellow color so that's where that's going you see as I kind of rub this in it just mellows and softens everything down and that just gives me something nice to kind of work on with the sharper more in focus colors later anyone is wondering this is a piece of Canson Maintenance Touch um, I've just masked it off top and bottom because I wanted more of a square shape so I've used that to help stick it to the board I'm working on as well this is just a piece of hardboard on my easel um, it's just easier to, to work on at this point just adding a little bit more orange here I just didn't like the fact it just wasn't orange enough it needs to be more orange I feel like you need to, it's nice in this this photo but I want the focus to be lifted up a little bit more at the moment when you look at the reference image the focus is probably about halfway down the image in the first in focus line of the rapeseed but actually I want to lift that focus up just a little bit more towards that orange line which is basically the back end of the field and just bring your focus right the way across the top of the field to the back edge um, I just feel like that would give more depth especially as I'm going for a square format and not um, the kind of landscape rectangular format that the actual reference photo is in and it will just give you a better depth and field of vision in this painting by doing that back to my purples this is such a lovely violet it's a warm warm violet but it's a lovely violet it's also a little bit neutral because it has a little bit of grey tone in it as well. I think the total time on this painting was around about 45 to 49 minutes, which isn't bad. Um, I've sped this up just because I don't think you want to be hanging around with me for that length of time. But if any of you are interested in having seen a proper full length real-time video please let me know in the comments below now here comes the greens this is where things start getting interesting overlaying green over a purple is always going to be hard no matter what you do because it can get muddy really quickly so I am doing this with a very light touch and as you can see I'm constantly um, wiping the pastel off on the cloth next to me on my workbench just so that I'm not rubbing too much purple in with the greens when, when I'm laying it in over the top um, otherwise what you get is it just gets so muddy purple's a great colour but it really does not mix well uh, with lighter colours over the top so you really have to be careful how you're kind of working that through
I always love putting a light colour over a really dark one, it just absolutely pops. I think what I'll do is I will let you continue to watch the process as I work through this and I will catch up with you all at the end.
welcome back and as you can see I'm just kind of putting in the final touches and just very very lightly stroking the pastel I'm letting it kind of hold it really loosely in my fingers because that allows it to kind of skip and jump and that actually forms um, a lot more kind of organic lines because actually they tend to do that no plant branch or stalk or stem generally goes in rigid straight lines they do go off and they curve or they bend or they go around something else or they intertwine so you want to be able to capture that and that's the color the best way to do it i'm just now adding a few highlights to uh, the tops of the flowers and um, just where the sun's catching it um, just because it, it's nice to kind of just bring them it will help bring them forward just a bit just to show the difference between the the back ones and the front ones if you know what I mean and yes this is my favorite color back again already didn't take me long to bring this one back out did it and a few dots here and a few dots there love it with flowers flowers you need dots everywhere doesn't matter where but just stick some dots in sometimes what I'll do is I will um, take my knife and I'll scrape just gently scrape the edge of a pastel onto the paper and it creates this beautiful fine dust which then if you use the back of a ruler and you press down into the paper um, it forms this really beautiful kind of speckled -y look um, it really is stunning it's very also very organic right let's give you guys a closer look at this so that is the finished painting it's a bit wonky just because of the angle of the camera to the uh, easel there but right here's the finished painting properly i hope you've all enjoyed your time here i hope to see you all soon again on another one of my videos remember to hit like remember to hit subscribe because that does a huge amount for the channel and obviously if you have any comments please leave them below in the video stream i will be more than happy to answer any questions you have otherwise let me know what sort of things you'd like to see ta-ta for now